right, folks, welcome, welcome back to uh, another video from Hiker Trash Nation. Again, please uh, subscribe uh, and like this video. It really helps out the channel if you found any value in it. Uh, today, we are going over how to prepare for a day hike. So I know that uh, like sometimes I'll get questions about, you know, what type of gear do you want to bring along? How much is too much? What do you want to leave home? Stuff like that. So that's what we're going to kind of cover today. Uh, so first of all, I just wanted to give like a couple of examples of, you know, kind of day hikes that could have been better for me. So like in the past, I've had uh, where I brought my girlfriend on a one of our first ever hikes on some steep terrain in the Oregon coast and I failed to mention to her you know kind of the terrain and stuff like that and she ended up wearing you know really heeled shoes that were not good for this hike you know it was like it was like 2500 feet of elevation up and then back down so not optimal shoes by any means and that was my fault and that was just a day hike and so again you know that could have been way more enjoyable you know I guess plus we got up to the summit and then obviously uh you know, everything was fogged in, so you actually had no views, so that was one thing. The second time actually happened when I was, it was a winter day hike, and so I was in the Mount Hood National Forest, and, you know, it was a great day out, or it was going to be a great day. I'm like, hell yeah, let's, let's go, let's go, um, you know, start exploring around here, and so I, you know, brought snowshoes and stuff like that, and I was just going to snowshoe. Well, it was going to be above freezing, that's why I wanted to go, sunny, you know, great day. Well, what I forgot to take into account was that, you know, the, there was snow on the trees, and so when everything warmed up, it was literally like it was pouring rain down on me from the trees all day long. So I got wet, and I didn't bring rain gear, because it didn't call for rain, you know. I um, Thankfully, I had a fleece that, you know, doesn't absorb moisture very well, so that's a tip right there. <clears throat> and so I wore that and it got, you know, kind of wet. I, basically, I had to keep moving to stay warm. My fingers were so cold. I didn't bring fingerless gloves like I usually do. So it's just like some of these uh, really small things that you might forget or leave at home and you're like, well, maybe I, I don't need it. Take into account the conditions, right? And so that particular hike, I learned a lot about um, hiking in, in the winter, especially when it's above freezing. And then, you know, the water capabilities of fleece. Uh, I was able to, like, I couldn't even grab onto my hike or my trekking poles. My hands were so cold. Like I said, I had to keep moving. And finally, I got to a sunny area or like a, a lake that was frozen over. It was sunny. And then I dried out all my gear, thankfully. So, but it's just a great example on how, <clears throat> you know, you know, very benign trips can turn uncomfortable or unenjoyable or really dangerous so here's like how I prepare for a day hike so number one I prepare the night before and I like to get all my gear out even two days before like I like to get all my gear out pack it in my day pack get my food ready breakfast ready so that when I wake up in the morning number one I plan to go early because I want to beat all of the rest of the people that are that come around you know late morning I, I like having the trail to myself so I like being able to get up in the morning grab my gear throw it in my rig grab my breakfast and and hit the trail so that's like a great great tip that helps me a lot another thing to do is before you go notify people where you're gonna be and so what this looks like for me is I have a mapping system where you can share a pin with someone else so I'll just share a pin with either someone that I'm living with girlfriend or something like that and just say hey this is where I'll be if you know something happens or if you don't hear from me also set a timeline when you're gonna be back hey this is and I like to overestimate my time I'll, like by a lot um, so like if you haven't heard from me before 8 p.m., you know, notify someone when I'll probably be done at like one or two. Uh, a couple other things are research the area and download your maps beforehand. So, you know, Oregon Hikers Guide has a really good uh, forum for this, like trip reports. You know, 
all trails has really good trip reports so you know see what the the conditions are right now uh, or currently for people that have that have went and then download some sort of offline map so you know where you're at uh, again you can do this with all trails I use onyx maps for this then another the last thing is you know obviously research the weather obviously it can change in mountainous terrain keep that in mind um, you know different weather calls obviously for different types of gear so uh, again you know like with with the winter hiking for me that's something that I learned and that's something that I'm gonna keep in my head now because I suffered through that for an entire day I'm gonna really be cognizant of if it gets above freezing is there gonna be snow on the trees you know am I gonna be wet do I need to bring a raincoat so what do I pack for a day hike so really in terms of clothing it's kind of the same as all my other hikes it just really depends on the weather uh, so I'm not really gonna go over that more what I'm looking at right now is like what kind of gear should you bring on a day hike okay because you don't you know day hikes are enjoyable right they should be in my mind they should be comfortable right um, you know when you're day hiking you're going out on trail early morning for me and then you're coming back late afternoon and you know you want to have it like you want to put some good miles in see some cool stuff but for me it's not like unnecessary suffering I guess so here's the things that I bring so one is a day pack so I used to always carry like just my regular you know backpacking bag and then finally I found this thing on sale at Bimart this is a Stan Sport 20 liter. I'll leave some links below uh, in case you want to buy some. Cause this is a this is a 20 liter day pack. Oh, it's it's a game changer. It's got a million pockets. Got a good main pocket, water bladder pouch. Got some uh, you know hip hip belts and pockets. So really, I, this is all that I need in terms of to pack for a day hike. If you're going in the winter, you might consider actually bringing a backpacking bag because you might be carrying snowshoes, micro spikes, that kind of stuff, puffy jacket. But in terms of like spring, summer, this thing is perfect for me. Uh, obviously, I have, you know, I always bring my trekking poles, right? So these are my Foxelli trekking poles. Again, I'll leave a link down to these. And these things have never failed me. They are like four, four wheel drive for your feet. So I bring those and then a couple other things is I will actually bring a water filter. Now, depending on, you know, again, this is where your research comes in. Is there gonna be streams? Do you cross streams? Is there a lake? Where are you hiking to, right? And so this enables you to bring a minimal amount of water on the trail when you originally take off. So less weight, right? So I'll usually bring just at least my Sawyer squeeze and then just some sort of little bag that I can use to filter, filter water. Bring my smart water bottle, just usually just one of them because usually I'm not, you know, going too far. So that's all I really need. And obviously I always bring, so this is my first aid kit that I always take along backpacking. And so I just swap this in and out of for day hiking or just regular backpacking. It's got ibuprofen, a tiny ass little compass, it's pretty funny. Uh, you know, an extra lighter, some fire starting material, gauze pads, bandages, stuff like that. So this is just, this thing goes with me everywhere. Then another thing that I have just recently started bringing along on my treks is a bidet. So this just attaches to your water bottle and this eliminates the need for toilet paper and all that fun stuff. I tried it out <laughs> a couple weeks ago and I actually really liked it. I'll do a full review on this, but I have, you know, the pack that came with these comes with three. So I just leave one in my day pack, one in my backpack. Don't, cause how many times are you on trail? You know, be honest. How many times are you on trail? You forget toilet paper. And then you're wiping with, you know, some random assortment of leaves and whatever, and you're not quite sure what they are. And, you know, let's be honest, nobody can really for sure identify what poison oak and poison ivy actually look like. 
Uh, so, <laughs> at least I can't sometimes. So, good thing to have. And then, I'll always, always bring a knife, right? And then I'll bring like a little solar or a little um, external charger just in case because my phone is my navigation. So I don't want that thing to go down. So I'll just throw in like a really tiny external charger, not my big anchor that I would take backpacking, but just some sort of like little mini charger works. So food, what should you take for food on a day hike? Okay. This really depends again on where you're going. I made a TikTok video that maybe I will link up here, but if not, I'll just kind of, you know, go over what I actually brought the other day on a, on a big day hike that I went to. So the first thing that I brought was a, um, so a, Lara, a Lara bar. Now, again, this day hike was about 11, 12, 13, 11 or 12 miles, something like that. So, and this, this food was perfect, gave me energy. There's no added sugar to this. Uh, I like to be, you know, eat as clean as possible if I can, even when, especially when I'm doing day hikes because I have the ability to like make food beforehand and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, this food's gonna help with the recovery, that kind of stuff. But what I brought was I brought one Lara bar, and then I brought an RX bar, chocolate sea salt, shout out. And then I brought a Ziploc baggie with salted almonds and then raisins, just like kind of as some trail mix. Then I brought two Ezekiel bread sandwiches of peanut butter and banana, and then tuna with some uh, with some greens and, and that kind of stuff. And actually I found some wood sorrel on the way and added that, tossed that in my sandwich. Then the last thing that I always bring is, always bring this, is my Mio Energy uh, droplets, which I actually think I have one right here. It's like, everybody should just have this handy no matter where they're ever at. Yeah, so right here, which was in my pocket in my day pack. So these are my Mio Energies, super helpful. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> always come in clutch for a little caffeine kick if you're you know, trying to get those extra few miles. So I will leave a link to the, like a little day hike checklist that I brought or that I created. I also wrote a blog post about this. I'll leave that in the links. But another question that I get is, you know, where can I find day hikes near me? Probably my favorite thing to do is go on alltrails.com. <clears throat> and I, you know, you create a profile, you can create folders. And so I organize my folders according to day hikes, backpack hikes, lake hikes. I organize it everywhere so I can just draw from that. But basically it comes in as a big map view. You can select areas and uh, for wherever you want to go. You can um, toggle it by or filter it by, um, you know, medium, hard, easy hikes, mileage, what you want to see. It's just, it's a great, it's a great tool. So that's how I find a lot of new ones. I also, for in Oregon, you can go to OregonHikersGuide.org uh, and they have great, great um, like step-by-step. -step. If you identify a trail, like, hey, what's, um, what does the trail actually look like? That's a good place to go for them. And then they also have forums for like current conditions and things like that. One thing I forgot to mention with all trails is that they also have um, people commenting on current conditions. So again, if, you, if you're thinking, well, maybe it's too early to go to a particular trail, check out those comments, right? And same with Oregon Hikers Guide, check out the forum. And then the last tip is that nobody's been there for a long time, it seems like. You know, there's no trip reports on all trails, nothing on Oregon Hikers Guide. Try looking for the trail on Instagram. This can be very helpful, just simply, uh, you know, either f follow the hashtag. So like if I wanted to go to Kings Mountain, I would, you know, look at that hashtag, hit recent, see some photos, uh, you know, kind of, um, you know, see from the photo, what are the conditions like, or also from the description that the person posted. You can also DM them too. I mean, you could honestly do that. Hikers are pretty cool. Uh, the other thing that you could do is search by place, and that would be like kind of the same thing. Recent, 
look at photos, evaluate what the conditions look like, description, ask the person. So those are just a couple of tips of the ways that, um, since I can't physically scout the area out to find out the conditions, that's, that's how I will do it. So I hope you like this video. You know, it really means a lot if you subscribe to the channel and it helps it out. Please, uh, you know, send me a like, comment below uh, what some of your favorite day hikes are right now or which ones you're looking forward to, you know, going on once the weather gets a little bit nicer. And let me know if you have any uh, questions. I would uh, love to answer them and I will see you for the next video from hikertrashnation.com.